Good morning. Welcome back to CJAD and welcome back to the Tommy Schermacher Show. And uh, if you're sitting there kind of tilted to the left because you're so deep in debt, uh, boy, oh boy, I'd say go out and buy yourself a lottery ticket. But you probably don't have the money to do that, but you should because today is your lucky day. Because why? Because sitting across from me is Lama Farran. She's a money coach who's going to give us tips on how to get out of mounting debt. And the first thing on, on the list of things to do, I guess, is A, to say, welcome to CJD. Thank you for having me. And B, to say, what is the difference between a financial advisor and a money coach? Yeah, I find that there's a lot of confusion around what money coaches do. Um, in my experience, every time I tell somebody I'm a money coach, they tell me, oh, so you're a financial advisor. Yeah, sure. I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't even have my financial advisor um, designation. Now, the main difference really is that money coaches are focused more on giving the knowledge around budgeting and money management skills. And there's also another aspect of money coaching, which is more related to the psychological aspect of money. For example, I some of the work I do with my clients is to make them aware of their behavioral patterns around money. So for example, if you hear somebody saying, you know, I keep spending, but I know I shouldn't, but I don't know why I keep doing it. So right there, you have a hint that they might have some subconscious lim limiting beliefs yeah. about money and they're self-sabotaging their own financial health. Well, let's, let's you know, and, and I know we have to be careful about words here. So let me let me be the one who, who commits the potential gaffe. Uh, on the one hand, there are people who say, you know, it's amazing the lack of financial literacy there is out there. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, people say it's amazing in this day and age just how stupid people are about money. They have no idea of what to do with their money other than take it, put it in the bank. Sometimes they, 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 they overspend. Yep. What is, someone turns to you, you're a money coach, usually what is the most common problem they have and what is the first thing you'll tell them? First problem they have is debts. They cannot make it month to month. Mm. The money comes in and it's already spent before it even comes in. Yeah. They have no clue. There's a total lack of clarity around where is this money going. There's actually one of my favorite quotes says, more people should learn how to, to tell their money where to go instead of asking it where it went. Yeah, exactly. And the problem is people don't know where their money is going. They live in what I call a financial <coughs> fog, really. Yeah. So usually the reason they would come to see me is debts and uh, living paycheck to paycheck. And always this this habit of dipping into your line of credit because every month you're short and you're not sure why and how to fix it. Is it, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners are saying right now, well, you know, she's talking about living paycheck to paycheck. That's got to be like young people. That's got to be like kids. Is that true? Is that more of a generational thing or are people pretty out to lunch when it comes to, to money across the whole demographic? I days? think it really affects everybody, the paycheck to paycheck. Uh, younger generation may be more because we're into this instant gratification. Yeah. So the latest iPad comes up, we're the first one in the lineup to go get it. And we haven't looked at our bank account to see how is that going to affect our bank? Can I really pay my visa once that the gadget bill comes in? Or, you know, they just put it on a future shop credit card, for example, at 30% interest rate, and then they say, okay, it's okay if it takes me a year to pay it off. Let me ask you what it what is, a, and, and if you're just uh, uh, joining us, uh, we're here with uh, uh, Lama Faran. She's a money coach. And uh, if I pause there for a second, because I, once again, I want to phrase this question carefully. I'm here talking to you, and I'm guessing that when you deal with your clients, you're not dealing with them on the phone or via email or via, you know, or, or via some, some filter. Mm -hmm. But is that one of the reasons why you actually have a clientele? Has the human equation become so absent in finances? We bank online, uh, it's credit cards. We hardly ever, you know, you're a money coach, but who handles money anymore? Yeah. Actual, like, cash. Yeah. Is that part of the problem that people don't realize that this is... Uh, 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 this is like for real stuff that you actually have to, down the road, you've actually got to pay for this. Is that part of the problem? Yeah, I think it's really people taking what I call the ostrich approach to things. They bury their head in the sand. They're in trouble. They don't know who to turn to. And the way they deal with it is they just don't deal with it. <laughs> so, yeah. and then they say, okay, you know, when I go to my bank, I don't know if I can trust them. I know they're going to sell me this product or that product. And they always, they're not sure who can solve their problem from um, an objective point of view. <clears throat> 
and who can really look into their bank account and tell them, you know what, this is what you should be doing. This is what you're spending money on. This is where your money should be spent instead. There is really a lack of, um, I'll say, help out there when it comes to uh, getting help for your budgeting needs. How do people find out about you? Uh, articles. I write sometimes yeah. articles in the newspapers, networking. Um, I do talks in library. I do a lot of workshops. Mm -hmm. So people are starting to find me. And every time, the funny thing, every time somebody finds me, they tell me I was looking for somebody exactly like you. I just didn't know the term, what to search for, what to Google for. They're like, I knew I didn't need a financial planner. I knew that I didn't need a debt consolidation service, but I didn't know what your job is okay. what the title is. Well, I'll tell you what. If for those of you now that now that you've you've been listening to us now for about five minutes, if you have any questions for Lama, just give us a call five one four seven nine zero zero eight hundred. Remember, she is not a financial advisor; she is your money coach. And we have one question. You might want to put those headphones on now, Lama, because we are going to hear from the nobly named James. Welcome to CJD. Hi. So my question is, I recently got married. I have a $350,000 house with a $110,000 mortgage left to pay, which is due for renewal next year. Uh, my wife comes in with two debts of a $20,000 MasterCard that we're only paying about $600 a month on, and a $15,000 regular line of credit, which is interest rate is like 8%. And I've asked my bank uh, to possibly combine all these things and have a regular line of credit attached to the house, which is only like 3%. So should I put all of my debts into a new mortgage or not? Okay. The thing is, I have a love-hate relationship when it comes to the line of credits attached to the house. And the reason for that is now it's going to solve your problem in the short run. You're gonna be, you're gonna get rid of those two debts that you have, and you're gonna have one payment, and life is good, and it's at a low interest rate. But it didn't fix the problem of how did you get those cards up. So you have to work on that behavior of how did I find myself using the line, the line of credit, and using the credit card, and not paying them off month after month. So it's okay, but it's a short-term solution. The longer term solution is how can I make sure not to find myself in the same situation? For example, I'm going to commit to having an emergency fund so that next time an emergency comes up, I'm not going to use my line of credit to bail me out, but I'm going to use my emergency fund. You see what I mean? So in other words, James, I, I think the short answer is you've, you've dealt with the effect, but the, you, you have to spend a little more time taking a look at the cause. And I thank you very much for the call. Uh, I have a great question here. I, I'm, I'm afraid you have all of thirty seconds, uh, all of thirty seconds to answer it, but it's a great question for those of us in debt. How much does a money coach cost? I work on different packages. It really depends. I have usually initial consultation with a client to see how far are they in debt. What do they need me? Is it a little tune up? Is it I have six month packages, one year packages, three month, or it could be like one session for a tune up. So it really depends on your okay. situation. When we come back, uh, I've got a whack of questions here from, from people listening to us via text, and I have a few questions of my own. We're speaking with Lama Farran. She's a money coach. No, not a financial advisor. And uh, if you've been listening thus far, she seems to know what she's talking about. Uh, but if you have any questions, give us a call, 514-790-0800, star talk, or 1-800-491-CJAD. Good morning. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're here with Lama Farran. She is a money coach, and she's been giving us tips on how to get out of uh, mounting debt and, frankly, be a little smarter about our money. And I have to tell you, Lama, during the break, uh, getting all kinds of text here, and it's, I'll, I'll try and sum them up. Uh, there's a good one here actually from Oliver. Hi, James. I always tell people to work on a cash diet. You will live within your means and you help out merchants on their ca on their card feed. Cut up your cards, people. Have you ever looked at a client and said, you know what? You got to get some, you got to get the plastic out of your life right now because this is what's driving you to the ground. Definitely because people don't have the discipline of putting something on their credit card and paying it. All, as I always say, your credit card is not your money. The yeah. limit on your credit card, people think it's their money. It's not yours. If you're not going to be able to pay it off at the end of the month, do not use it. I personally use credit card just because I don't like carrying cash, but I have paid zero per, zero dollars of interest in the past 20 years. And they I've must love you at the credit card companies because you're 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 clearing your balance because like you're not. Yeah, making, yeah I'm like exactly. the worst customer. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being a bit sardonic. But, yeah. But that's really and I mean, you're saying it out loud. And I remember when I'm, I'm I got a few years on you, my friend. And I tell you, that's the first lesson I learned is you've got to clear that 
or because really, as you say, people think it's their money. Actually, it's a loan at a ridiculously high r- yes. rate, which you'll never get out of. Exactly. You know? And I'm happy because back in September 2010, there was a new regulation forcing the financial institution to write down yeah. on your statement how long it's going to take you to pay down your credit card. And that should really be a wake-up call for you when you receive your bill. And you look at, you know, it's going to take me 10 years to pay off my grocery bill. <laughs> But honestly, I mean, you think I'm being snarky now, but in your experience, yes, mm-hmm. people will get their statement. But apart from looking literally at the bottom line, do you actually think they pay attention to that? Do you, do you get the impression that people are actually paying attention to how they're spending their money? No, because this is what I call being on autopilot. We run our lives on autopilot. We eat on autopilot. We drive on autopilot and we spend our money on autopilot we don't think we don't look we don't take time to what i you know doing a financial health check i tell people have a date with your money every single week once a week you sit down you have a date with your money you pull out your statements you look at them do not pay them blindly Hmm. look at what it says look at those little asterisks and those little fine prints because this is where you your attention should go it's where your attention should go but you know i mean is it well, you know, I'm, maybe I'm being too negative here. Do you have any success stories? Do you actually have people who, you, who you've who you turned around, like really, really, I can't believe you dug a hole this deep for yourself and they actually got out of it? Yes. I had a client recently. She was a big, big overspender. She, her income is amazing, but you can't see anything because it's all just going to what I call waste. Mm. And a few weeks ago, she said, oh my God, I'm so excited to save versus spending these days. I'm like, Wow. Yeah. So she was getting what I call, you know, the pleasure from spe- saving instead of the pleasure from spending. You alluded to it a little earlier in the show, but I wonder if that generally when we talk about people winding up in debt and generally when we talk about people, you know, living beyond their means. Mm-hmm. Is it just the bells and whistles and gizmos that really piles it up or, or, or what are people spending their money on? There's a lot of gadgets. And I think one of the major things is the house. You go to the bank, they approve you for a mortgage. I say, don't take it right away. Go home and do your homework and see if you can really afford your mortgage. Mm. That's the big one. People are getting themselves into houses with like 5% down payment that they just withdraw from their RSPs and without any other plans, without any emergency fund. And, you know, the thing is, the banks are going to make the money from selling you mortgages, right? And I read an article recently. It was called The Rise of the Miserable Canadian Homeowner. I'm like, of course they're miserable. We give them mortgages that they can't afford. Yeah. They move into the house and then reality hits. How am I going to pay for this thing? So mortgages are a big thing. And there's also the the feeling that I think advertisers really try hard to instill this in us is that we're not enough. Yeah. We are not enough. We're not whatever we have is not enough or it's not good enough. So for you to fulfill that inadequate feeling that they're poking inside of you while you go and you spend and you try to fulfill this I'm enough now. And that's a scary thing. And I'm glad you mentioned that because as a former homeowner, I can recall that one of the biggest, you know, you're in there and yes, you got the mortgage, but there's always something in oh, a yeah. house. Yeah. Even if you're not buying into all the ads, there is always something that you have to do that costs money to do. And, and like a lot of fun, a lot of things you, you take for granted while you're growing up, mm-hmm. you got to go out and buy. Well, <laughs> you know, I got to buy a lawnmower and a snowblower and a rake for the lawn and, and whatever. That all costs money. It all winds up. Yes. As part of your debt load. Of course, but it's the way I would do it, or I did it, did it yeah. is really following the, instead of the buy now, pay later, you save now, buy later. Yeah. We bought a house. The deck that came with the house was tiny. It barely fit two chairs on a table. It took us 12 years to save for a deck, and we built it last year. But when we built it, we paid it all cash. That's it. I didn't go to Home Depot and finance my deck over 10 years. <laughs> That's the difference financing your deck and that's why you're a money coach yes Mama Faran, it's been a pleasure talking to you thank you i hope you have a good summer to enjoy your deck as well because yes it doesn't look so great out there right now no it's been a real pleasure talking to you thank if you. we want to find out more about what you do is there a place we can go online for sure my website is max worth that's m-a-x-w-o-r-t-h dot c-a and funny enough i recently bought the domain save now by later.com so if you go there it'll take you also to my website Excellent. Well, we'll do our best to put that on our Facebook page as well for CJD. Listen, a real pleasure talking to you. Thank Hope you. to talk to you again.